All right, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to implement uh, controlled sources within ORCAD PSPICE. And the problem we're going to solve is problem 4.75 in the textbook. In this problem, uh, we're asked to find the Tebnet equivalent circuit of this, of this network. Uh, but this network contains both an independent source, but also a controlled source. In fact, it's a current control, current source. And we're going to model this in ORCAD, and we're going to calculate the Tebnet equivalent. And the Tebnet equivalent, of course, is going to be calculated with our two tests where we first calculate the uh, open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. So we're going to open up Cadence. And again, we open up ORCAD Capture. And as this is opening, um, I want to mention that when we grab a current controlled current source from the parts list in ORCAD, we're not going to find it uh, as a CCCS. In fact, um, rather it's going to be given by a name which is, seems to be encrypted, but actually the naming scheme used is pretty universal for controlled sources. And the names are E, F, G, and H. So that's easy to remember. It's just four letters, consecutive letters in the alphabet, E, F, G, and H, where E is a voltage control voltage source. F is a current control current source. G is a voltage control voltage source. And H is a current control voltage source. And so these are the names, and these are the part names in, in PSPICE. And in PSPICE, when you call for a part E, you're going to get a device that looks like this, which is a controlled source. But the way this works is on the right-hand side is actually the controlled source. So this is a voltage source, and it's in the circle, and that tells me that's the source itself. But the controlling voltage is actually connected to the left side of this uh, device. In fact, the wires will connect the left side across the two nodes, which are the two voltage nodes that are controlling the source. So that voltage connected across the left times the gain, which we would specify, gives you the voltage control voltage source. For a current source, again, F is a current control current source. On the right-hand side is the actual source. It's an arrow in the circle. Arrow indicates current source. The circle indicates this is the source. Um, on the right-hand side is the controlling current. So we're actually going to run the current through this branch on the, on the left-hand side. I said right now it's on the left-hand side. And that current is soon to be flowing along the arrow. That current flowing through this branch times the gain, which we would specify is the magnitude of the control source. And that is similar for the G, which is a voltage controlled current source, and an H, which is a current controlled voltage source. So these are the sources that we would find and um, spice their names, E, F, G, and H. So we will need an F source that is a current control current source when we build this model. Okay. So, all right. Let me go ahead and open a project. I'll open up the like 2132 tutorial project, which we were working with earlier. And I'm going to open up the project and I'll open the schematic. And I've already constructed the schematic for 4.75. Okay. All right. So here's the schematic. Um, all right, but I'll show you how I put this together. And what I just want to show you here to start, so I hit the escape key to get rid of that uh, magnifying glass. Okay, this is the current control current source. All right, I'm exciting this with a DC source, 280 volts DC, and the part is VDC for this. Now my two cam resistors, and this current control current source is in parallel uh, across R17 with this 2 cam resistor. What we have here, though, is that ID, which is running through this 2 cam resistor, is coming out of the source through 2 cams and then into this node. Well, that's exactly what we're doing with my controlled source, except I've had a branch here which is coming in to the top part of uh, my current control current source in this branch. It's just a short circuit branch, but it measures the current. 
it wraps around into R16, this 2 cam resistor, and then into this node. Okay. And then on the other side, this controlling source times the gain, which I set to 0 0.2, is the magnitude of this source. All right. So let me um, go ahead and, and grab this part. Just kind of start from scratch here a little bit. Just give you a flavor of how this was put on here. So I go to my parts, and we're off here. This is my parts menu. And I want part uh, um, F, which is for the current control current source. But if you can't remember, just type E, F, or G. So for example, if I just type E, um, oops, if I type E, I'm going to get the voltage control voltage source, or I try F. And there's the current control current source, or G, and so on. Okay. So if you can't remember which one is which, it's fine to scroll through E, F, and J. So I'll choose the F analog, and I'll put it on the test bench. But before I do, you notice that the currents you know, are kind of an awkward position, so I can control R this and rotate. All right? And I'll rotate until I have it going the right direction. And then as the terminals are going the right direction, but if you notice the current itself is going in the wrong direction, no matter how many times I rotate it, it's always going to go into the left when it's down. But what I can do is right click on the device itself. I'm going to right click. And I can mirror this horizontally. So this flips the image horizontally. So now it's going to the right. Okay. So now my current source is going in the right direction. And I can wire this up. That is, this node is now connected to the left side of the source. And I'll connect a wire to this node here. Escape gets out. Now what I need to do is I'm going to need to run wires from the voltage source in and then back to R16. Okay. So I can do that and I'm going to, this is the current flowing in and then it's going to flow out. It's going to come down to R16. Now if you notice, I'm going to connect here on the red circle but I'm not connecting. These wires are crossing, but they're not connecting, okay? Because this is a forms a, a path, but a, a disconnected path. Okay, so I rebuilt that circuit. All right, so everything's set. Now, next, we need to measure the short circuit current and the open circuit voltage. Now, to do the short circuit current, Spice is not going to like a short here. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I could short this out and remove that, but it, just so I can do both easily, I'm just going to put a resistor here with a very small resistance uh, in parallel. In fact, I'm calling it one micro ohm, uh, which is, you know, compared to the, you know, the kilo ohms, it's obviously for all practical purposes zero. So when I simulate this, um, I'm going to measure the current through here and call that a short circuit. Okay. Now let's, we can, we're ready to simulate, so I go into P-SPICE, and first thing I should do is edit my simulation profile. I'll make sure I'm getting a bias point, which is I want. It's just a single DC value. And now I'm ready to simulate. And so I can hit Run SPICE. As it runs, okay, it's pulling up a window. And it's done, and I see that no errors were generated, so that means we ran successful. Okay, so I come to the schematic and I can turn on my currents. And I see I have 140 milliamps running through this one micro uh, ohm resistor. Okay, whoops, that's not right. And what did I forget to do? I forgot to set my gain, which is 0 0.2. And I set that gain, 0 0.2, and now I run it again. Okay, so I ran this, I ran it again with the correct gain, and now I get 60 milliamps. Okay, so I go over to my MathCAD model uh, where I ran with a short circuit. That's the second solution here. So I shorted out AB, and I ran this, and I found that the current I want to that branch is 0 0.06 amps or 60 milliamps, which corroborates or agrees with the SPICE simulation. 
Okay, excellent. Um, next, we can rerun this as a open circuit. Whoops, I clicked on the close that. I clicked on the device rather than the value. So to do an open circuit, I can't put infinity here, but I can put a very large resistance. Let's go ahead and put 1,000 mega ohms or 1 giga ohm, which for all practical purposes is an open circuit. And I can re-simulate this. Okay, that finished without error. And now I can click look at the voltages. Now I find I have an open circuit voltage of 112 volts. And then I come down here, and I find the open circuit voltage, which is voltage across the AB. And what I did was I calculated that as being the current I1 through this 5.6 K resistor is indeed 112 volts. And that agrees with my simulation. So that's how we would use a current control current source. All right. Let's look at another example using a controlled source. I'll choose problem 4.79 from the textbook. And mainly just, you know, it was just closed. I just found this and it had a, a, volt, a, a current controlled voltage source in this particular case. Again, we're asked to find a Tevnet equivalent. Controlling current is this I delta up here through this 150 ohm resistor. And that's controlling this voltage. This 250 is the uh, trans impedance gain. Uh, times I delta is the voltage. And so we want to find again the tendon equivalent of this circuit. So what I'll do is I'll close 4.75. And I already built the circuit just to save us time. Let's zoom in. So I'm going to do here zoom to region. And I'm just going to put a square around the region that we want. Zoom that in. I'll hit escape to get rid of the magnifying glass. Turn off these values right now and show you what we did. So here's my current control voltage source. Now, one thing, you know, it is annoying, a little bit annoying about ORCAD, but it, it works. Um, you know, simple circuits like this, it's not bad for more complicated circuits, it's a little bit messier, but we have to run the branch through the controlled source. So this is my I delta and this is my V. If you notice, I delta, which is running through R22, I just routed it down, no connection here, across into my source, down and around and up into R22. So this current indeed is flowing out of this node and through R22, this 150 ohm resistor and down. This is the current controlling the voltage source, okay? Has a gain of 250. I double click on that. I can set the gain. All right. And again, this was part H. So again, out of the parts menu, you go to the parts menu. Now just type in H. And here's my current control voltage source. Double click, and I can use that to place it on the test bench. Okay. All right. Okay. So of course, this circuit has no independent sources and because of that of course the open circuit voltage here is simply um, zero so my v tevnen will be zero and then to find r tevnen well we need to find the look back resistance which is the network resistance but it contains this controlled source so how do we do that well what we can do that is we can drive this with either one volt or one amp source and so i chose to use a one amp source across a b we're going to measure the voltage across that source when we're done. That voltage divided by one amp gives me R ten net. Okay, so I did that analytically here, and I found um, that this I delta uh, looks to be minus one hundred fifteen point four um, milliamps, and I found this the voltage the current through this loop here to be nineteen point two three milliamps. Uh, of course the current around this loop is minus 1 milliamps, but then the applying KVL, uh, 50 times I delta minus I2 plus 250 I delta as the voltage across this branch gives me this voltage. And so for my analytical solution, I found it's 15.4 volts. All right, so let's see what SPICE says. So I go ahead and run SPICE. And again, I watch, and we see no errors. That's good. 
my zest to come over here and I turn on the voltages. And indeed, I'm getting 15.39 volts across this one amp source. So therefore, I find that the wood back impedance is um, 15.39 ohms, which is 15.39 volts divided by one amp. Okay, I can check the current, and indeed, um, I find that the current to I, what I call I1 is 19.23 milliamps, which is what I found with um, my MathCAD simulation. This current here, I delta, is flowing to the right. It's minus 115.38 milliamps. This current here, remember the current label on the right side here means the current's flowing into that node, so it's to the left. So to the left, it's plus 115, which means to the right, it's minus 115 milliamps. Again, which agrees with the analytical solution. So both of these two, both of these results agree. Interestingly, I can look at the powers, and we see that this controlled source is generating supplying power, 29.4 watts, as is the one amp source. And of course, all the resistances are dissipating power. And if you add up all the resistance powers, you would get the sum of these two power supplied and power is conserved. So this concludes uh, the tutorial on how to use controlled sources in ORCAD SPICE. And again, to do so, we need to use the part symbols E, F, G, or H for the VCVS, CCCS, VCCS, or CCVS, respectively. Okay. And that ends uh, this particular tutorial.